You thought it was love, the charm, the intensity, the grand gestures. But slowly, everything changed. Criticism, the manipulation, constant feeling of walking on eggshells. If this sounds familiar, you might have been in a relationship with a narcissist. Welcome to our channel. Today we're talking about something that affects millions but is often misunderstood. Healing from a narcissistic relationship. These relationships can leave deep emotional scars, shatter your self-esteem, and make you question your own reality. But here's the truth. You can heal, you can recover, and you can thrive again. Healing isn't just important, it's essential. Without proper healing, the trauma can affect future relationships, your mental health, and even your physical well-being. That's why I've put together this video to guide you through five powerful, actionable steps you must take to recover from a narcissistic relationship. Whether you've just left such a relationship or you've been struggling for years, these steps will help you reclaim your life, rebuild your self-worth, and open yourself up to healthy love again. So let's dive in and start your journey to healing. The first and perhaps most crucial step in healing from a narcissistic relationship is to acknowledge the abuse. This might sound simple, but it's often the hardest part. Narcissistic abuse isn't always obvious. It can be subtle, insidious, and deeply confusing. Some signs include constant criticism, gaslighting, emotional manipulation, and cycles of idealization followed by devaluation. You might have experienced love bombing at the start of the relationship, followed by increasing control, isolation from friends and family, and a constant feeling that you're never good enough. Now here's something I want you to really hear. This abuse is not your fault. Narcissists are master manipulators. They're experts at making you believe that you're the problem, that if only you were better, smarter, or more attractive, they would treat you well. But that's a lie. Their behavior stems from their own deep-seated issues and insecurity, not from anything you've done or failed to do. This is where validation and self-compassion become absolutely crucial. You need to validate your own experiences and feelings. Trust your gut. If something felt wrong, probably was. Start by telling yourself, what I experienced was real. My feelings are valid. I didn't deserve to be treated that way. Practice self-compassion. Treat yourself with the kindness and understanding you'd offer a good friend. It's okay to feel hurt, angry, or confused. These are normal reactions to abnormal treatment. Remember, acknowledging the abuse isn't about dwelling on the past. It's about facing the truth so you can begin to heal and move forward. Now that we've acknowledged the abuse, let's move on to step two, establishing no contact. This step is absolutely crucial for your healing process. Why is no contact so important? because narcissists thrive on attention and control. Every time you engage with them, you're giving them an opportunity to manipulate you, to draw you back in, or to inflict more emotional damage. No contact breaks this cycle and gives you the space you need to heal and rediscover yourself. So, how do you implement no contact? Start by blocking their number, email, and social media account. Delete their contact information and remove any reminders of them from your daily life. If you live together, make a safe plan to move out. Remember, no contact means exactly that. No calls, no texts, no checking in, no responding to their attempts to reach you. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, but what if we have children together? Or what if we work in the same place? These situations can make no contact challenging, but not impossible. If you share children, communicate only about essential childcare matters, preferably through a parenting app or a neutral third party. Keep all communication brief, emotionless, and focused solely on the children. In a work situation, maintain strict professional boundaries, interact only when necessary for work-related matters, and always in a professional manner. If possible, ask to be moved to a different department or team. Remember, the goal is to minimize contact as much as possible, even if you can't eliminate it entirely. This low contact approach can still significantly aid your healing process. Moving on to step three, educate yourself. Knowledge truly is power, especially when it comes to healing from narcissistic abuse. First, let's talk about narcissistic personality disorder, or NPD. This is a complex mental health condition characterized by an inflated sense of self-importance, deep need for excessive attention and admiration, and a lack of empathy for others. 
Understanding NPD can help you make sense of your ex-partner's behavior and realize that their actions weren't about you, they were about their disorder. Next, it's crucial to understand the manipulation tactics narcissists commonly use. These include gaslighting, where they make you question your own reality, love bombing, where they shower you with affection to gain control, and triangulation, where they use other people to make you feel insecure. Recognizing these tactics can help you avoid falling for them in the future. Now, where can you learn more? There are numerous resources available, books like Psychopath Free by Jackson McKenzie or The Covered Passive Aggressive Narcissist by Debbie Mirza can be eye-opening. Online support groups can provide a sense of community and shared understanding. And of course, therapy with a professional who specializes in narcissistic abuse recovery and be invaluable. Remember, educating yourself isn't about obsessing over your past relationship. It's about understanding what happened to you, validating your experiences, and equipping yourself with the knowledge to recognize and avoid similar situations in the future. The more you understand, the more empowered you'll feel in your healing journey. Now let's move on to step four. Focus on self-care and healing. This step is all about reclaiming your well-being and rediscovering yourself. First, let's talk about physical health. It's common for survivors of narcissistic abuse to neglect their physical needs. But your body and mind are interconnected, and taking care of your physical health is crucial for emotional healing. Focus on getting enough sleep. Aim for seven to nine hours a night. Eat nutritious meals that fuel your body, and don't underestimate the power of exercise. Even a 30-minute walk can boost your mood and energy level. Now, let's explore some emotional healing technique. Journaling can be a powerful tool. It helps you process your thoughts and feelings, track your progress, and recognize patterns. Meditation or mindfulness practices can help calm your mind and reduce anxiety. Even just five minutes a day make a difference. Perhaps the most crucial aspect of this step is rebuilding your self-esteem and identity. Narcissistic relationships often erode your sense of self. Now's the time to rediscover who you are. What are your values? What do you enjoy? What are your goals and dreams? Start small, try new hobbies, revisit old interests, set achievable goals, and celebrate when you reach them. Remember, healing isn't linear. Some days will be harder than others, and that's okay. Be patient with yourself. Celebrate small victories. And most importantly, be as kind to yourself as you would be to a dear friend going through the same situation. Self-care isn't selfish. It's necessary. By focusing on your physical and emotional well-being, you're not just healing from past trauma you're building a strong foundation for a healthier, happier future. We've reached our final step, and it's a crucial one. Seek professional help. While the steps we've discussed so far are powerful, working with a trained professional can significantly accelerate your healing process. Therapy offers numerous benefits for survivors of narcissistic abuse. Skilled therapists can help you process your experiences, work through complex emotions, and develop coping strategies. They can assist you in recognizing and changing harmful thought patterns, rebuilding your self-esteem, and setting healthy boundaries in future relationships. There are several types of therapy that can be particularly helpful for narcissistic abuse survivors. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, can help you identify and change negative thought patterns and behaviors. Eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, known as EMDR, can be effective in processing traumatic memories. Other approaches like dialectical behavior therapy, DBT, or trauma-informed therapy can also be beneficial. Now, finding the right therapist is key. Look for someone who specializes in trauma, narcissistic abuse, or personality disorder. Don't be afraid to shop around. It's important that you feel comfortable and understood by your therapist. Many offer initial consultations, which can help you gauge if they're a good fit. Remember, seeking help isn't a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength and commitment to your healing. You've already taken a huge step by recognizing the abuse and deciding to heal. Working with a professional can provide you with tailored support and guidance on your journey to recovery. If therapy feels out of reach due to financial constraints, look into local support groups, sliding scale therapy options, or online therapy platforms, which can be more affordable. Your healing is worth the investment. 
We've covered a lot today, so let's recap the five powerful steps to heal from a narcissistic relationship. Acknowledge the abuse, establish no contact, educate yourself, focus on self-care and healing, and seek professional help. Remember, healing is a journey, not a destination. Be patient with yourself and celebrate every step forward, no matter how small. You've already shown incredible strength by choosing to heal. If you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay updated on future content. Share your experiences or insights in the comments below. Your story might be exactly what someone else needs to hear right now. And stay tuned. In our next video, we'll be addressing the most common questions about healing from narcissistic abuse. Drop your questions in the comments, and I'll try to address as many as possible. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. Together, we can heal and thrive. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.